Seemed like another must-win game for K-State on Saturday here in Manhattan, and yet again, they lost it. 75-72 the final score. Jameer Nelson Jr. does him in with a three with one second left to play after K-State had done a lot of battling back to tie the game at 72. K-State did a lot of the things they wanted on the final possession. You put the ball into the hands of a 25% three-point shooter. You defended it fairly well, but... You know, sometimes it's your day, and it was Jameer Nelson's day when he knocked down that shot. I'm Mason Voth. That's Drew Galloway. Welcome into K-State Online as, again, the Cats fall 75-72. to And at the end of the day, bad teams lose games. And over the last month now, K-State has only won one game. It was here against KU, who has mightily struggled on the road. And they have found numerous ways to lose games. But really, at the end, like in this game, you can point to, hey, you had some calls not go your way. I mean, Arthur Kaluma picked up two of the most bizarre, surprising fouls of all time. But you can't really blame that because K-State did a lot of things poorly that they've done all season that cost you games. They got killed on the glass, and they couldn't shoot it from three. And at the end of the day, that's the difference maker in this one. Yeah, it's, it's just hard to win a game where you're, where you're shooting 7% from the three-point line and one of 15, I believe it was, was the final tally. But it, it's also, there are going to be games where if you're in a funk and you're struggling, things just aren't going to go your way. Micah Peavy, 55% free throw shooter on the season, like 57% for his career, goes 8 of 10 today for the TCU from the free throw line. Like you said, Jameer Nelson, 25% three-point shooter, threw up a prayer at the end of at the end of a regulation, hit it and to win the game. So when you're, when you're rolling... It seems like nobody can beat you, but when things are going bad, it feels like that you can't get out of your own way, and teams just keep finding ways to beat you. Yeah, and that's that's what happened today. K-State had a 10-point lead in the first half, gone. They trailed. They had an 8-point lead in the second half, gone. They trailed. Trailed by as many as 10 in the second half, which, I mean, I get. Teams are going to come back. K-State has obviously come back and made things difficult on people, but... It seems almost inexcusable to be in your home building needing wins down the stretch and get an eight-point lead, you have the crowd on your side, and somehow then find yourself down 10 and having to scramble to get back into it. you got to seize those opportunities, and K-State just has not been good at doing that. It is just hard to win a game where you allow a 20-2 to two run on your, on your home floor. That, that's almost the, the thing that I think is the inexcusable part yeah. of today. You can have games where you don't shoot well. You can have games where you don't defend well, but you can't allow that big of a run in your own gym at that at this stage in a game that I felt like K-State had to have. And you also had two of your top three players just were absolutely terrible yeah. for the most part. Arthur Kaluma was really bad. Cam Carter ends with as many turnovers as points today. Yeah, Cam Carter, Cam Carter killed K-State today, not just from the standpoint of he himself individu- individually was bad, but like he just wasn't ever a part of the offense. Like, I didn't even feel like he got some of the looks at times that you're accustomed to. So that that's a big one. And, you know, I, fans said it best to, to us after the game, like K-State only has three guys on this team that their opponents have to even remotely worry about from the three-point line. You cannot do anything offensively to change that up. There's no offense that will fix that. And he's absolutely right because it's the reason why Tyler Perry has had for the most part, I think, such a a bad year this year is other teams know that he's really the only shooter they got. Kaluma can pour it in occasionally. Cam Carter, it's like if it's his night, it'll go, but most of the time it's not. And that's why life has been so tough on him. So then when you go out there and you just don't have those guys, you're already limiting what you can do from three. And today it ends up with K-State going one of 15 from downtown and never really feeling like they even got good looks. No, and big picture, this loss just really, really hurts. Yeah, this is another loss on K-State's home floor, which we've talked about many times this season, that you have to win road games because your your margin of error is just so thin yeah. at home if you lose the games on the road. And they're going to be going to Austin Monday night to play a desperate Texas team who's getting their butts kicked by Houston right now. So that, yeah. it doesn't get any easier. And, and it makes you worry about down the stretch, kind of like how we talked on the Big 12 show on Thursday, where I, I don't know a game outside of the West Virginia game where I can confidently say K-State probably wins. Yeah, it's it's tough to pinpoint it in that. I wouldn't even go that far based on how K-State's been playing right now. They're in a tough spot. Jerome Tang kept saying, hey, 9-9 in the Big 12 gets you in. They're sitting with five wins still, and it's tough to, to do the math to get K-State to 9-9 when you keep losing home games to gettable teams like 
it's one thing if you lost at home to Houston, but you didn't. It's one thing if you lost to Iowa State. You haven't yet. It's one thing if it's, you know, KU even. Or Baylor. Or Baylor. It's none of those teams. It's Oklahoma by 20, and it's a TCU team that they're offensively challenged a handful of times. And Turnover State, I mean, K-State turned it over 14 times. That really that feels like That feels like a win. Yeah, that really wasn't things. a problem for them today relative to how things went, and TCU turned it over as many times. So opportunities missed by K-State, and I just go back to what I said earlier. It's bad teams lose games, and K-State has showed us over the last month they're just a bad team. We thought we knew it. They got off to a little bit of a surprising start, but th there's just not enough to help the other guys, and the top three have to be so flawless. And today, you really only got Tyler Perry in that category. David Gasson was good today. He did some really nice things, but nobody else stepped up for this team. And you just can't win a game in the Big 12 with one really good performance and one really solid one, and then a bunch of no-shows. The, the concerning thing for me was, again, a, a, it felt like a lack of focus at times. I, I pointed it out probably three or four times during the game. K-State wasn't guarding Micah Peavy within five feet if he was on the perimeter, and he still kept blowing by the K-State defender because the K-State defenders were just lazy and didn't have good footwork. That's concerning. Yeah. Like M Micah Peavy is a pretty good basketball player. If he's the one that's going to beat you, that that's fine. But you can't allow him to beat you off the dribble when you're giving him so much space, because the with the way that he beats, because the way that he would usually beat you is getting to the rim. You want to force him into jump shots, and Casey just didn't do that. Yeah. Well, depending on how you look at it, you either want Cincinnati to win or lose tonight, because if Cincinnati misses out on the NCAA tournament, they will get the NIT spot that K State would have been guaranteed, and you said I can't confidently pick a game that K State wins moving forward, except West Virginia. How confidently can you say that K-State can even be an at-large NIT team this season? Because it, it's hard. I mean, it, it it would. I think even to get to the NIT without the without the automatic qualifying spot, it probably requires two more wins at least. Yeah. So we'll see how it ends up going for K-State. Uh, one other thing that that I wanted to mention: Jerome Tang after the game says in, in post game, nobody's panicking in that locker room. My question would be, Drew. Is that a bad thing at this point where well they've lost six of seven now? Yeah. And two at home and all like all these other things that have gone on. You're running out of time to, to get the wins you need to get to where you wanted to be. Should there be some healthy panic or you know urgency going on as opposed to, hey, everybody's because the everybody's calm approach and gonna get figured out the one game at a time, that has not been working. I, I think the hard thing is is that if you are not panicking right now, I just don't know if you ever will, because this is probably the stretch that would cause a little bit of a panic. I, I think that we saw not necessarily a panic, but more emotion out of the players in the in a post game press conference. I, I, at least I I thought I thought the players seemed more upset than a normal. Yeah, game. I, they were definitely upset. It wasn't much. I was a little worried about how Tyler Perry handled it. I think that's a guy that looks and says, you know. Well, the last two, three weeks, I've picked my game up, but everybody else has kind of slipped back on this team. He, he tried to do the right things. He tried to say, hey, like, point guard's got to be better. I almost took that as him player speaking it, but also being like, what do you want me to do? I, I scored 24 today, and I can't get a look for my best shot because nobody else on this team will step up. Now, I'm not trying to put words into his mouth, but – a little bit of a question there, so we'll see. I, I think that we saw a little bit more emotion than normal. I, I just thought that the players, to be completely blunt, I thought the players just seemed pretty pissed off. Yeah, after the they game. were not happy, which is good. Yeah, which, which I think that's a good thing. But I, I also think that if you aren't panicking right now, you probably won't panic at all. Yeah. And, and the sense of urgency, I think, has kind of lacked at a lot of different moments yeah. this year. So. I, I don't know if you'll ever get that yeah. at this stage. And if you don't have that at some point, you're, you're probably not going to go where you want to go. Like, there is a healthy amount of worry and nervousness and panic that can go on in lives. That can drive you to be better, and it just doesn't seem like this K-State team has had it at any point. And we'll see if they regain it on Monday night in Austin. D.Y. and Drew will be there. God bless them. And uh, we'll see if K-State can turn their season around on Monday in Austin because – they haven't yet, and times are getting very dire for them. So that will do it for Drew and I. Thank you for watching K-State Online. Cats fall 75-72 to, to TCU.